Kwasi here. In today's video, I want to share with you how you can stay in that feeling of the wish fulfilled. Ever since I've started doing videos on Neville Goddard's teachings and breaking those down, I've gotten a lot of questions, particularly about how to stay in that feeling of the wish fulfilled. And I truly believe if you master this, this is one of the most crucial things you can do because it's really easy to get in the state. But how do you maintain that state? Because if you learn to maintain that state for long enough, things in your reality move faster. So by the end of this video, I'm going to share with you a three step method that you can employ every single time you find that you're detracting from that state of the wish fulfilled and how to continually get yourself back to it. Guys, I'm really excited to share this video. Let's go right in and get started. Today's video is about feeling of the wish fulfilled. So if you are following Neville Goddard, you know, what the feeling of the wish fulfilled is and the importance of getting to that state where you live from the end. You feel that you've already accomplished everything that you have. And from that end, you live your daily life. The importance of this, I can't understate because something magical happens when your heart and your mind come together in your mind. When you conjure up that image of your final destination, where it is you want to go, what you want to be and what you want to have all of those things you have a clear picture of and you combine that with feeling then a very powerful force comes into play which i like to call outer intention and it starts to make it happen much quicker than if you were to just focus your mind or you were to just focus your feeling the interesting quirky thing that happens is every time we make an intention and we commit all of our energies to going into that direction something interesting happens Life begins to throw tests your way. It starts to get a little bit murky. You know, as soon as you make that commitment to have something, has that ever happened to you? You know, let's say you've made a big life change and you've decided to ditch all of your old things to commit to this new path. And as soon as you started to commit to this new path, all of these challenges came up, all of these doubts and all of these fears came up and it takes you away from that feeling of the wish fulfilled. That's personally happened to me back in 2019 when I first decided decided to start up my own online business and I decided to quit my full time job. And when I quit, I was supposed to go into this engineering job that I had no passion for. I had a summer internship before. And then after I graduated, they offered me a full time position. My parents were really happy, but I wasn't because I knew this isn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I did have an idea of what I wanted to do, but it didn't quite get the traction that I wanted for me to confidently make a decision. So I made an unconfident decision to say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to go into that job. I'm just going to go into my online business, which, you know, I sort of had some videos at the time, but it wasn't that big for me to confidently say, yeah, you know, it doesn't make sense for me to go to that job. So I did that. I declined that job offer and I went all into my business as soon as I graduated in May. And prior to May in the business, I was making one to two K a month, but it was just roughly stuck there like one, two K and even maybe like a three or four K month. But then that month of May, as soon as I graduated and I decided to go all in on the business, that that month, I made absolute zero. Every single prospective client that I spoke with, they just didn't want to do it. They couldn't afford my services. I offer coaching and nothing was going right. And I was panicking. I kind of gave my word to my parents that somehow I would make it work. They paid for my tuition. They paid for everything. And they just wanted to see me do well and be financially stable. So I made this ballsy decision and it failed. And so there was a lot of pressure on me that whole month. I was almost pretty much crying every day. I just didn't know what to do. But then I remembered all these teachings that I learned. And I remembered that life always throws you a test when you fully commit to going into one direction or you want to move up. So whenever you make an intention, life will always throw you tests. And you must remember this, okay? If you don't remember this, then at that time when that happens, you're gonna not know what to do. You're gonna start getting confused. You're gonna be like, why the fuck is this happening? Why is it always me? And you're gonna start playing the victim, which is what I did for a bit, right? But then I knew that I had to deal with these feelings because the old me had to die in order for the new me to be born. Please remember this. Your old self has to die in order for this new improved self to be born. And once you learn this crucial lesson, it becomes a lot simpler. So now the question is, how can we deal with all of those thoughts, all of those feelings that come up, all of those doubts, all of that negativity? Well, we have to understand that there's one fundamental assumption that we're making with reality creation. And it's that naturally we are all pleasant, we're all happy and we're at the highest vibration. That is our natural state. 
But once we surround ourselves with society and once we get conditioned into societal conditioning, that life is hard, you have to fight to win your place under the sun, you have to work hard, you have to grind, you have to struggle. Once we buy into that conditioning, that becomes our reality because we're feeding it with the power of our feeling and the power of our mind. So it becomes a reality for all of us. So we believe we need to struggle in order to achieve anything worthwhile, but that is not true at all. If we operate from the assumption that, hey, we're naturally perfect, then that means it is unnatural for us to be imperfect. It is unnatural for us to hold onto that conditioning. That therefore means if we remove these clouds of unnatural conditioning, then our natural conditioning is perfection. Our natural selves, who we are at peace, at ease, that is our best selves. So we just need to deal with all of these negativities and these feelings that arise that take us away from that state of the wish fulfilled and and just remove these clouds so that the sun can shine forth. So now let's talk about how you can do that the most effectively and how I did that that month that literally made me go from zero in that month of May in my business to doing 5K the next month and then 10K and then 20K and then growing it to 100 grand every single month. This process that'll allow you to properly deal with these latent feelings that are coming up, your old self that's coming up every time you make a new intention. This is called the letting go method. I'm going to link the reference video where I go into much more detail about this process down in the description and the comments below. So please make sure you watch that. That is a very in-depth video on how to conduct this process of letting go. And it has helped many of our customers, many of the viewers of this channel. So I would highly recommend that. So how this letting go process works, and it's going to work in this instance, is going to be in three simple steps. Step number one, whatever is arising in this moment, what is your natural reaction? How do you naturally react to whatever is arising. Our natural reaction is to run away from it, escape it, to suppress it, or to repress it, or to express it. These are how we've been conditioned to react to whatever is unwanted that's arising within us. Please take a moment to reflect on that. Has it ever happened to you that you've been feeling anxious and you run away from that anxiety through watching television, binge eating, or whatever it is, right? So you do some sort of compulsive habit that's not serving you, scrolling through social media, keep constantly, incessantly checking your email. I've done all of those, right? So I know exactly what it's like. So that's how we've been naturally conditioned to deal with this. But guess what? None of these ways are the best way to deal with it. The best way to deal with all of these feelings and that old self that arises, and this is gonna blow you away, is to accept them fully. Complete acceptance of what is. You might be thinking, oh, quasi, if I want to stay in the feeling of the wish fulfilled, isn't it bad for me to feel negative feelings? No, not at all, because this too is part of the process. You must deal with these feelings in order for you to completely feel the feelings that you want to feel, your natural state. Once you remove these clouds, then the sun is free to shine forth. Once we get into full acceptance of whatever's coming up, I'm going to give you the example I mentioned previously. In 2019, May, me failing, all these doubts and fears coming up. Oh no, am I going in the right direction? Did I make the right decision to start up a business? Should I go back to the corporate career? Should I just please my parents? No, I knew I wouldn't be happy, I'd still regret it. So I might as well give it a full shot or die trying. So that was my commitment at the time. And so when those doubts and fears came up, I realized instead of running away from them, instead of checking social media incessantly or getting in some destructive behavior, I literally one day just sat with those feelings. I just sat down and did absolutely nothing in complete silence. Whatever feeling was coming up, I embraced it fully. Fully embraced it, accepted it, and I even asked for more of it. There's two ways to defeat your demons or defeat your fears, so to speak. It's number one, you either confront them head on by doing the activity or the thing that you're afraid of, or number two, you confront the feeling. Because again, the feeling is the vibration of the corresponding reality. When you deal with the actual fear itself, you are naturally dealing with the feeling. But when you deal with the feeling itself, you don't necessarily need to have your worst fears come to life. You can just deal with the feeling and then be done with it. So something that you're fearful of, you'll know you've done this process well. You know you've accepted it well. If in the future, that thought comes up, but there isn't as much energy, as much pull. It doesn't make you as reactive. I got into full acceptance of whatever was arising at the time. Those doubts, those disappointing my parents, disappointing myself, failing, all of those feelings that came up and I even began crying. That's how strong it was. But once you have that tearful moment, that's actually a big moment of surrender and letting go. A great book on this is called Letting Go by David R. Hawkins. 
So I would definitely encourage you to read that if you haven't, and the reference video will talk about that as well. So this is all you need to know. Don't try to do some NLP hypnosis technique to get rid of the feeling. Don't try to distract yourself by doing something else. All of those are ineffective because they merely suppress and repress the feeling and then the feeling keeps coming up. Instead, just deal with it by looking at it head on. All of your fears, all of your doubts, all of the worst case scenarios that could happen. Just look at it, accept it and see that yes, this could come true. This may come true. Am I willing to let it go? Can I be okay with that happening? Whatever the worst fear is. It doesn't matter what the words are, what, what you say to yourself. The core underlying feeling is that of acceptance, of embracing whatever is coming up in this exact moment. Once you do that, you're not gonna need any of this. If you just learn to do just that, to become so acutely aware, to be able to observe yourself. It's easy to give someone else advice, right? Because you're not them. But if you learn to observe yourself in the third person, give yourself advice and be able to look at your patterns and your behaviors, then you become a master of yourself. If you become a master of yourself, then you become a master of your reality. Number two, the second thing to understand is that it's not going to immediately disappear. If you're having a bout of anxiety or fear or pain and you get into acceptance of it, it's gonna last for 10, 20 minutes at the max at its intensity, but then it's going to subside, which is great. But then it's going to come up again because there's more that needs to be dealt with. Keep, repeat as much as necessary. Just repeat this act of full acceptance, sitting in silence, looking at it and fully accepting it, embracing it. This too has permission to exist. Please remember that. Now, an important point to note is that most people, when they learn about personal development or Neville Goddard stuff, they try to escape their current feelings by doing some visualizing technique or saying some affirmation like, oh no, this is bad, so let's do what's good. And this resistance keeps that negative feeling going and it keeps it strong. This brings me to point number three, which is what we wanna do, is whenever we feel neutral, whenever we've relinquished these underlying feelings, and it's not as strong within us, the anxiety or the fear, then we're free to visualize and go into that feeling of the wish fulfilled or whatever manifestation technique it is that you're wanting to do. To give you an example, in my journey, when I was feeling more neutral at that stage, that's when I saw myself as that 20K a month, that 100K a month business owner, how I would be living and how good I feel doing that. And I systematically bring that state up whenever I feel like it. It's not like I'm forcing myself to. I, whenever I feel like it, I focus on my goals, I think about them and I feel good about it. And I see what it's like to be that ideal self. Focus on what is wanted when Neutral. Hope you can see that. Terrible handwriting, I know. These are the three steps for you to successfully stay in the feeling of the wish fulfilled without any impediment. And I don't care what anyone says. This is literally what I've done for the past four years. So I know for a fact it works. And I've worked with 900 clients who've done all of this and they've seen it work firsthand in their lives. So if you do this diligently, I can promise you, you're going to stay in that feeling of the wish fulfilled and your reality will unfold quite nicely. I do want you to watch that letting go video because we go into a lot more detail. So make sure you click on that description or the link in the pinned comments and watch that. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that little bell there so you're notified of any new video that I put out. That's all for this video. Thank you so much. Till next time. Peace.